Welfare Committee to order. Um, for the moment, I am the only council member present, Paul Koretz. And I believe that is not even correct. Uh, we now have a quorum with uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, we will start by opening general public comment. Seeing no general public comment, we will close general public comment. Um, and I will ask, uh, pretty close, I will ask that we approve items 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8 on consent without objection. No objection. And then if we could hear item number 2. Item 2, CAO report relative to proposed first supplemental agreement to contract number C-127171 with Mercer Investment Counseling, LLC, to extend the term two additional years and increase the expenditure authority by $379,000 for consulting services for the deferred compensation and pension savings plans. Oh, welcome. Um, my name is Stephen Montagna. I'm here to represent the personnel department. Uh, Robert Roth, the CAO's office. So uh, this is a um, uh, request to approve execution of, of a, um, a supplemental agreement to an existing contract um, that we have with Mercer Investment Consulting. Um, what's, what's a little bit, uh, can, can be a little bit confusing with this particular contract is that it's actually used for two different programs. So it's, it's uh, used in the administration um, um, of the um, primary uh, retirement pro uh, program that that we have for full-time employees which is wh which is which is the deferred compensation plan and we also use it for the retirement program for part-time temporary and seasonal workers and that's the pension savings plan the the, the board that um, administers the deferred comp plan um, has they actually um, can contract for up to five years uh, um, that's that 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 provision is 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 um, actually written into the ad code, um, but um, that that authority does does not extend to the pension savings plan, which which is managed by the personnel department. So what we're doing here is coming forward and and, and basically asking for approval to be able to um, uh, provide uh, to 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 provide the. Um, the, the, the contracting authority to the personnel department general manager to execute for, for, for the two additional years for pension savings plan um, for, 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 the, for, for those services specifically. Now, uh, new investment manager contracts are required during this period. Why is that? Well, so the um, board uh, for the deferred compensation plan um, actually has a um, procurement and search um, re regular schedule in, in, in which they go out every five years and they're looking for investment managers. Um, so this is, this is part of the investment policy statement that they've adopted. And, and, and basically what it means is that there's, they've, they've, they've created a, um, a, a regular process where they're, they're, they're going out to the market and looking for investment managers on a regular basis. Uh, sir, if I could clarify as well and add to what Stephen had mentioned, the, um, these contracts are actually expiring during 2019 and 2020, and as a result, during the term of the supplemental uh, agreement, it, it is the time period when, when a search should be conducted. Okay. And uh, what accounts for the $99,500 cost increase per year of the agreement? Uh, again, the, the cost of uh, the search related to finding new investment managers it's, it's essentially the entire amount of that. Um, there is a d additional miscellaneous research costs, which are are also added into that. But approximately ninety-two thousand dollars of the ninety-nine thousand is uh, is related directly to the investment manager searches. Okay. Mr. Smith, any yeah, questions? So, so m w you're saying you're consolidating the PSP now into this contract as well? Is that so? Historically, because the um, programs are very similar. Yeah. Both uh, um, the, the the consulting costs, um, the um, what, what the, the um, we've 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 put these two programs together so that um, uh, if if there's a need, which which is fairly rare, that we need to go to the consultant for pension savings plan consulting, we we can just we we can just use use this contract. Um, I think. 
one of the things that we'll be looking at going forward is probably to, to break these out into two different contracts the next time we do a procurement. Okay. Um, we just think that would that would be less, you know, it would probably be less confusing. Okay, so they're in their um, consulting agreement on this. How long have we had that contract with them? Th this is a three-year contract, so it's in the and we're extending two additional. So years. they came on when we switched over to Voya for for um, No, actually, uh, that they this contract would have would have preceded Voya. Okay, so the, the reason I'm asking is when we switched over to Voya, there was a lot of issues that had to be resolved. We needed the consultants to do that work. Was this contract set at that level of work level, and we're now going to re reduce it down because the switch is over? So actually, um, there are two consulting contracts for this program. Uh, what Mercer does is, is, is the investment consulting only, which is different than the third-party administration, oh, okay. which was the change to VOIA, because right. VOIA doesn't administer right. any yeah. of the investments. Okay. That's the problem. All right, so if... Uh, no other questions or concerns. We'll approve the CAO report without objection. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Item number four. Item four, personnel department report, response to motion, Martinez, Gregorio, and Rodriguez, relative to instructing the personnel department to transmit the harassment and discrimination working group summary report to council for review. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Wendy Macy with the personnel department. Um, I'll just give you a, a, a brief overview of the Preventing Harassment and Discrimination Report. Um, first, by way of backgrounds, the city has many robust policies, practices, procedures in place to prevent and address harassment of all kinds, including sexual harassment. So we actually started out with almost an embarrassment of riches. There are multiple policies, multiple practices, many good trainings, many things. And what we really needed was to try to implement something centralized. So we took more than a dozen of these procedures and tried to organize this. So our report is, a, is actually a consummation of uh, a great deal of work, collaborative work, uh, with the mayor's office, with uh, some of the council offices, uh, with uh, multiple city departments, with the Commission on the Status of Women, the city attorney's office, personnel, of course, um, really trying to consolidate all of these best practices that existed within the city as well as researching other jurisdictions, other agencies, to get the best practices out there. So um, we've created quite a, quite a voluminous report, um, but um, it's been vetted by many subject matter experts. Um, in the interim, of course, we haven't been standing still. We did implement the My Voice LA platform, which allows uh, individuals to report instances 24-7, uh, even anonymously, uh, uh, from home, from their computers, and our staff deals with those on a daily basis, and um, implemented a centralized intake unit within the personnel department, again, to have some standardization, some consolidation of some of these claims. Um, we're still working on a lot of things. We also ju uh, ran the uh, report by um, our labor partners uh, to see if they had any, any input as well. We've surveyed general managers. We've surveyed all city employees. And again, what we tried to do was to take all of the, the knowledge, the feedback, the input from all of these stakeholders uh, to present the report that we have before you. Uh, there are 47 separate recommendations. It's going to be an ambitious undertaking. Uh, and we've been working primarily with four subcommittees that have been addressing policies, procedures, technology, training, and so forth. And so the work is really, um, it's been very busy. I want to acknowledge my, my team and, and, and our other partners for all the work they put into it. But we have a lot of work left to go. And um, at this point, again, because given the large volume of the, uh, of the report, I don't want to go through it in detail. But I would be happy to, and my team would be happy to take any questions you might have. I've got a few questions. So what's the composition of the mayor? <coughs> The mayor's risk reduction cabinet? Uh, the risk reduction cabinet, uh, the principals uh, are, are, are the mayor, uh, the, the city attorney, and uh, uh, the chair of the uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Um, and it's uh, staffed by a number of different departments. Uh, we have, uh, through the executive directive, um, had to identify, uh, each department has identified a sort of a chief risk officer 
who participates in the, in the work of the committee. So this is just one of the things that the committee is focused on. They focused on other risk management things having to do with workers' comp and safety and, and things of that nature. And has uh, Labor asked for any particular changes to the working group's recommendations? And uh, at this point, I don't believe we've received any, any, uh, any changes or recommended changes from our labor partners. Okay. And do you have systems in place already to collect the, the metrics that are recommended? Uh, I mentioned the My Voice LA uh, platform just a moment ago. Uh, it's been sort of a work in progress. We rolled it out on a soft launch and then rolled it out uh, in September. And what we focused on primarily was sort of the front end user interface to make it more easy for, again, the, the, the user, the potential victim to do it. Some of the back end data tracking metrics and so forth, we're still working with, with ITA on. Uh, our group meets regularly with them and so we're still in the process of developing. We do have our internal systems in place within our our ODCR unit within the personnel department, but we're hopeful that uh, the My Voice LA will, con will have more case management capabilities, which will allow us to track more detailed metrics to that we will be able to report back to you as well. So you're hoping to build on that rather than start from, from scratch? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have a timeline for implementation of the recommendations that came out of this? Uh, we have a work plan that goes up into it through next fiscal year. Um, some of these things, I think, will, will take longer to develop. Um, we have some things with respect to training uh, that we are, um, uh, will require some in-person training, which will take a while to implement because obviously we have such a large organization with so many employees, volunteers, commissioners, etc. cetera. Um, we have... Uh, uh, onboarding that we're going to be trying to implement in the next year. There's just many, many things, and, and they each have different uh, different time frames. So what, what do you think the, the furthest out timeline would be once you're completely finished? What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Herman. Uh, I heard uh, that outburst from you, and uh, we'll make this your first and only warning. And same with Mr. Spindler. We hope to get the, the policy done next, uh, the implementing procedures, the technology we should have done hopefully within the next several months. Uh, I think maybe the training and so forth, it may take a little bit longer to roll out, but we'd hope to work as expeditiously as possible. And uh, last question, are there costs that you know of yet to implementing this whole procedure? Do you have a sense of what that'll cost yet? Yes, we're very, we're very, we're very grateful to the council for the support that's been given thus far to, to this initiative. Um, some of the things that we've already begun investing in uh, are, are the, the licenses and so forth for the technology for the, for the My Voice LA. Uh, we also did receive the, uh, the funding for the staffing of the centralized intake unit. We hope to expand upon that. Uh, there's uh, expenditures with respect to uh, the training, as well as uh, uh, what we hope to do is develop the, the protocols for an outside uh, expert panel that we could refer uh, uh, some of the more complex cases to, and that also requires uh, some expenditures. But uh, these are all captured either in what was in our, our budget from last year or is in our, our upcoming requests. Great. Mr. Smith? No questions? Move the item. And we will do that without objection from me since you already moved the item. Mr. Chair, just uh, for clarification, um, the various recommendations, are these very, uh, seem to be throughout the report, or are we going with that, or are we going to note and file this and wait for further, uh, more uh, direct reporting? Um, I guess we'll note and file it. Okay. But we will. Wait for more specific. We'll We'll, Council we'll approve member. the motion and the personnel department's recommendations, but I don't know if C it's just a note and file or move it forward. No. If I may, Jody Oxheimer with the personnel department, there are um, roughly four pages of recommendations where we ask that the personnel department be instructed to engage in a number of activities, um, some of which were highlighted by Ms. Macy. Um, 
and then subject to consultation with our labor partners. So we would appreciate having the committee move those instructions forward so that we have your direction on some of the policies and other ac ac actions that we would like to take. Fair enough. So that will be done without objection. Otherwise, we approve the report and the recommendations. Okay, item number nine. Item nine, sale report relative to proposed second amendment to contract number C-126901 with the Amanda Foundation for the operation of the mobile spay neuter clinic. Welcome. Uh, Brian O, Office of the CAO. Catherine Chico, Department of Animal Services. Uh, the Department of Animal Services requests um, authority to execute their Second Amendment with the Amanda Foundation for a mobile spay and neuter clinic. The Second Amendment will extend the term of the agreement from December 17, 2018 through December, six, or December 16, 2019. It will update reimbursement rates for the spay and neuter clinics or surgeries and add the spay and neuter of rabbits into the scope of services. The Second Amendment will also clarify language denoting that the services are applicable for low-income residents of the City of Los Angeles and allow animal owners to complete an affidavit uh, claiming low-income status and residency in the City of Los Angeles. Uh, the Department is here to answer any questions that you may have. Well, the only real question I have is the amendment provides for $500,000, mm -hmm. but for a one-year period, but the contractor uh, only did 211000 previously, so why do we think we need so much of a larger expenditure? Uh, the $500,000 is a maximum limit. Um, it's not necessarily a note to note any minimums. So uh, similar to the Lucy Pet Foundation, which is a contract that was executed at a similar time, um, they both contracts have a cap of $500,000. So if, the, if that amount isn't spent, uh, what happens to it? Uh, that amount, then it just stays in the Animal Sterilization Trust Fund, which is the fund that the count pulls from, and it will be it can be reused for future spay neuter surgeries. Okay, Mr. Smith. So there is an increase of fees in here. How much would that increase in fees equate to in total in the contract? So just the increase of fees. Well, that would depend on the number of dogs and rabbits versus cats. Based on our experience then. Uh, you're, you, you, I mean, you, you, you prepare a budget based on what you know is going to probably happen. So you're looking at about a 20% increase? Yes. So in fees, so that the the budget increase should be about 20% then. Yes, and it depends on the makeup of what type of... Of course, yes. yeah. So, so correct. making generalities because that's how you make a budget. So correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay. You're correct, Council Member. Okay, we have a few speakers on this item. I believe uh, Mr. Wayne Spindler, followed by Mr. Herman. When the spay and neuter our cats and dogs, but also according to the LA Times, we should be also neutering and spaying Jose Weza as another type of a cat. Because you see, when you have a cat and it's named Jose Weza, it goes out and tends to make I lots think of this puppies. Is, uh, off topic. It ties to me. Your only warning to be on if, topic. If my if my cat is named Jose Weza and it's not spayed and neutered, then it's going to go out and play with other cats and get other cats pregnant. So just like my little cat, Jose Weeza, I want to spay and neuter my little Jose Weeza kitty cat. Meow! So he stopped fucking with all the other pussy in the neighborhood and making too many kittens and lawsuits for the city. Yes, sir. So go ahead there. Read that shit, man. Weeza uh, citing FBI probe to the postpone discrimination by uh, phone. You're off, you gotta off. neuter yeah, him. You know, yes, you. sir. Your time is up. Mr. Herman. So we're trying to create an operation of mobile spray and neuter. 
Unfortunately, my cat, Francine Godoy, can't be sprayed or neutered because I can't afford it. I'm disabled, I have a fixed income, and I understand April is the month of spray and neutering. Am I right? Am I right? So, I think you're off topic again. No, I'm talking about my pussy cat, Francine Godoy, the bitch I can't afford to spray or neuter because it costs money. And when you're on a fixed income and you're collecting only a certain particular dollar amount, every dollar counts to a meal when you're homeless. So don't fucking tell me I'm off topic, you fucking fat, stupid slob. I'm on topic. You're just a dumb fucking Jew with no fucking rules you're and attitude. Topic again. And you wear a badge like a so pussy and a half. So you're done. Like Jose Weez, are you fucking cunt, Jew, motherfucker. I got six seconds. You do not have clock. any time to Four, you oh, fucking please, dick. Two, you fucking depart. cunt, bitch. Now I'm you're done, whore. Well, having heard that valuable and extremely relevant bit of community <laughs> testimony, um, I will recommend that we approve the CAO's recommendations on this item without objection. And uh, I do not believe anything else is left on the agenda. That clears the desk, Mr. Chair. So we are adjourned.